Hey guys, this is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is fine. We had a quick question and I want to take a little bit of time to answer that. It's regarding a custom function. So uh, this gentleman had a function uh, AZ overtime underscore weekend. And I'll show you what he did in VBA here. He has this function here and he said it's not working and he'd like to get it to work. And for it to uh, do some kind of uh, using some if but he wants to make it easier on his, his colleagues to be able to use a custom function. So um, what we are looking at here, we're doing the sum ifs, and that function will give you the sum as long as you're meeting whatever criteria the user inputs in. So what we've got here is our function is basically just like sum if um, so far, except one thing I see right off the bat is that in the azot underscore weekend function, he's got one, comma, two, three, four different uh, areas or criteria. But then you see in his, um, in, in when he's declaring his variables here, he's saying he ha is expecting one, two, three. And so there's really no place for that. Uh, this cell right here, the employee number. So if you wanted to, you know, do it by employee number, you're going to have to have a fourth um, area there, and possibly a fifth, uh, fourth for the entire range, and then the fifth uh, or the first one of five for the actual employee number, and then the second one might be the range for the employee number. So let's just do it on the worksheet and see how the sum ifs would work normally. Sum ifs tab and we're going to say we want to know well here's the sum range uh, that would be the uh, work hours so let's hit uh, E3 and control shift down to the very end and let's let's um, we'll hit F4 to make the dollar signs there let's hit a comma so now our criteria ranges begin so the criteria ranges that we want to start using would be the first criteria might be um, he wants to know what all hours are on Saturday for this person. So um, we're going to select the day range and we'll click here and control shift down and let's hit F4 to make that uh, permanent and then hit a comma and now you see we're looking at the criteria for criteria range one. So the criteria is uh, parentheses Saturday because he just wants to know who all has hours over, uh, basically for overtime, but who has hours on Saturday. I guess they don't work Sundays in his industry. So hit comma, and now our criteria range two um, is probably going to be um, the employee number. Let me check actually, did he do the employee number, let's see. I wanna look at his again, um, I'm gonna hit Just hit enter. That might be might give an error. Might not. So let's see. Yeah, he's got. He's got a. Okay, so he does have the employee range right there. A. Um, then he's got F. And then he's got E. So he's got the hours range. He's got the date, the day of the week, a uh, weekday range, and then he's got the employee range. So actually, that was good. That was good. I take that back. Um. But let's go ahead and finish this off here. So we want to know um, the sum of column E, which is the hours. We want to know our first criteria range is this range here, the days. And then specifically our criteria is the day called Saturday. And furthermore, we only want it for that employee. So we need another range. That's our employee range. So click here, control shift down and then hit F4 to make that uh, permanent, and then hit common. Our actual criteria the first time, the first one is going to be this one. I'm not going to hit F4 because that one we want to copy down. So that is the employee that we are actually wanting to use from this employee range. So we have our criteria range and the criteria specifically. So it's going to combine all that information and tell us how many hours are on a Saturday for that employee. So um, using the sum ifs. So it says there's 1.25. So if this is 
let's see here. I want to get the value of that equals this right here. So that is 6 colon 0. So I want to equals value of this. So that's 0.25. Um, if he wants to work hours, he's actually got a little bit more problems than he thinks he has. He needs to turn this into, convert that into hours. Um, the best way to do this, instead of equals D3 minus C3, so this minus this, this the end time minus start time, you actually need to take the end time and minus the start time, put that in parentheses, and multiply that by 24 uh, because of just the manner in which Excel processes time. So that being said, I will go ahead and copy this down and we'll convert, oops, I'll copy the formula down because it looks like there's some some uh, shading going on here. I'm going to copy that down like so. And we're going to right click and we're going to paste the actual formulas but not the uh, any shading or any other formatting. That being said, we're going to change the formatting on the surface, control shift down, and hit control 1 with me if you're following along. We're going to change it not time, but let's just go to general. Uh, because these are now numbers, or maybe a number with the two decimal places. So it's, so now it's showing you the number of hours, 6.0 hours. Aha, so now our formula works. It says there has been 30 hours uh, for this uh, worked on Saturday for this gentleman. And lo and behold, if you hover over here and look down here, it says the sum is 30. So that's our, our sum if is working just fine. Now, if you happen to know that all you're ever going to want to know about is Saturdays, then we could make a very, very dumbed down, simple version of this function. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that without all this extra stuff. So rather than them having to type all this stuff, they could say AZ overtime underscore weekend of A3. That employee number. What? Uh, and, and it'll automatically figure out the ranges that it needs to use and do all that intuitively. So let's get started on that part, shall we? That'll be fun. Okay, so the first thing, let's go back to our Alt F11, let's go back to our formula here. So let's plan ahead. First of all, we need to know the, um, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take all these out, but I'm gonna I'm gonna save them just for records. So Control Z, I'm gonna put a comma or an apostrophe rather, excuse me, and just so we can see those for a reference point, but. AZ overtime underscore weekend. So the only thing we really need is um, EMP, that's employee, and that can be uh, text or numeric, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to make it as a variant. Um, so let's get started. Let's see. We are going to end up with this worksheet function to plug into the value of that formula. All right, let's see here. So the thing I want to do, I want it to automatically take whatever the active worksheet that it, the formula finds itself in, I want it to take the last row. So that's, remember, the control up. So it'd get the last row, and yeah, so it's got an extra thing here, but it's never going to have, this is not going to give any extra numbers into our formula because this is never going to be the right employee number along with the word Saturday along with some hours right here. As if it says thanks and best regards right there, and that's the last row, then who cares? It's still going to work just fine. So let's get the last row. And you can find out how to do that by checking out uh, my... Go to my channel and click uh, last row video. Or just type in last row. You'll see lots of resources on that. Lots of comments. But anyway, we're just going to say um, ALR. So that's for the active sheet last row. And you can name that anything that you'd like. ALR is going to be equal to the active sheet dot cells. And we're going to take the row, the row count, comma one. Uh, so for column A, column one there. Dot end, and we're going X L up, not X one up. That's X L up, and we want the dot row. So we want the row of all this gibberish here. And again, we'll explain that in a different video. But so we got the last row here. So um, let's go ahead and try to trigger our formula here. So let's do it. Let's see. Equals A Z overtime weekend of this employee number. That's all we're going to give it. So I'm going to hit enter and that triggers it right here. So we have the last row is 131. 
So that's our last row that we're going to use. Now we're going to make some ranges up here. So actually, we're going to go ahead and, and declare these, but just not as part of uh, not part of the, the things needed in the formula. So it's automatically triggered again. And so we have IDR as range, DY as range, and HR as range. And we're going to set what those ranges equal. So set IDR equal to... And we're going to say active sheet dot range, and that range is going to be um, starting with. Let's see, IDR. Which one is that? Um, I don't know what these abbreviations mean. I guess this is the day, and these are the. This might be the employee ID range. Okay, this is the employee ID range. Okay, so the ID range, the IDR, is going to start with A three. So it's going to be A3 through A, and put your uh, end quote, and we're going to put an ampersand, and we're going to combine that with our last row variable, ALR. And for some reason, I put those backwards. So I need to move this, Control X, above that point, because obviously you have to have the last row before you can have A3 through A last row. So it says A3 through A131 at this current moment. And we're going to do the same thing with some of these other variables. Set this one, set this one. So we're just going to change this to D, how about DY. So we're going to set the day range, and we're going to set the HR, which is the hours. So the day range is actually affecting the day range is actually on column F. So F3 through A in our last row variable. And then the last one was on uh, E, which is the hours. So that's E3 through E. 131 at this moment. So that's how that works. Then we're going to go ahead and finish off with our uh, summit. So, but uh, so let's go ahead. Uh, let's go ahead and backtrack here. We're going to set our ranges up here to be uh, set with this actual living live awesome range here. And so now we have our AZ overtime weekend equals worksheet function. Uh, uh, worksheet function dot sum ifs and then we have our um, let's let's go back to I'm gonna stare at what it looks like oh, what do we got here oh I really wanna click over on the page there I'm gonna go ahead and end our function and I wanna s stop that um, I wanna look at the sum the successful sum ifs and so I can kind of emulate that. So let's go, while we're staring at this here in the background, it will make it a little bit easier for me. So the E3 range was the HR. So we have that as the beginning of our sum ifs. That's our hours range. And now we have to start doing ranges followed by criteria. So the DY range followed by Saturday, I think, is actually pretty good. And then the next part is IDR. This is ID range followed by the ID. So uh, let's see, ID, IDR is our A's, and then the ID. Okay, so all he didn't do is just, he just didn't do an ID. Wow, I missed that the whole time. Anyway, I'm just trying to make it a little bit more very, uh, fun, a little bit easier, uh, to where they just have to choose the employee number only. But anyway, so the ID range um, is set, and then the ID, well, the ID... We have actually called that EMP. That's the only thing they type in. So we're going to say EMP is our built-in variable that whatever cell they click on will pop into our variable called EMP. So at the end of all this, it's going to do a sum ifs with all the same stuff we put in that worksheet, except it's going to automatically figure out what those ranges are for the user. And the only thing they have to do is input the employee number uh, which by clicking on the cell, by the way, if they want to. So let's see how this works, shall we? I'm going to click here. A is equals A Z overtime weekend underscore or underscore weekend of the employee on A3, and I'm going to hit enter. And so now we've gone through all these hoops. We know that the ranges are correct. We're going to hit F8 and see what happens. And the answer is 30. So looks like we did well. The only thing that we maybe didn't do well is I need to format this as a number or general. So control shift one uh, would format that as a number and then there you have it. So we'll take our newly found function 
which is so easy to replicate for your coworkers, equals A, Z, and just hit tab. And then select your employee and hit enter. Now we can copy this down by double clicking right here. And now you have your number of Saturdays per employee number. So some of these, this, this in particular employee right here, I don't know who that is, but that employee has only worked six Saturday hours according to this and if we look around here oh it must be this day and look it says Saturday so this employees only work six Saturday hours and so on and so forth so again uh, if we just take any random person this person right here and we change this to well I'm not going to change the date but if we change it to a Saturday let's just do 823 of 2014 which is the day prior it would say let's see here do we need to re-trigger this aha uh -huh. so it, it, you may need to make sure that you have calculation on automatic this workbook may be on manual calculation but at any rate um, I'm going to change that back 824 so make sure that you do have your uh, calculation on automatic but anyway, that function would work just fine. Uh, otherwise, you could put all the other uh, variables in if you didn't want to limit it to just the employee number. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and God bless.